Okay, so we're going over simplifying and stating restrictions. Um, in order to simplify, what we're always looking to do is factor. Okay, so for the denominator of this, we have a trinomial. There are three major terms, and on the bottom, we have just one single term here, a monomial. Okay, what we are going to do is by looking at this, you see that these um, exponents here is probably going to be different or difficult to. Uh, look at a specific style of factoring. So one of the first styles we should always look at and one of the easiest style is common factoring. Okay, so we're gonna look for our common factors first. Common factor. Touring. There you go. Okay, and what we mean by common factoring is we look at each of the coefficients individually, then like variables, so the a's, and then finally other like variables, the b's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate from the top of this equation. I'm actually going to just specifically work with the top of the equation to start. So I'm going to highlight that. Oops, okay. So we're just going to work with this. I'm going to rewrite it in green, and we're going to factor that part. Okay? Because it can sometimes be hard to rewrite a fraction such as quite a large one like this over and over again. So we're a little equal sign. We have 15a to the power of 4 b to the power of 4 minus 3a to the power of 4, b to the power of 5 minus 6a cubed b6. Now, uh, the first thing I want you to look at is the coefficient. Do you see a common factor with the coefficient at all? Mm -hmm. What would you see? 3. 3, that's right. 3 comes out of everything. So in other words, we're going to divide all three of these terms by at least the coefficient 3. Okay? But there may be more to this. Are there common variables? Mm -hmm. What common variable do we have first, alphabetically? A. a. Okay. Now, what variable should we take out of this? Do you the know? smallest one. Yeah. So a to the power of what? Three. That's right. Yeah, because that's the smallest one. So a cubed. And then finally, any other variable that's common? Um, b. Yeah. And what should we take out of that? The smallest one. Which is? B4. Good. Before what? B. <laughs> No, that's a joke. <laughs> okay, so this common factor, it doesn't just disappear. What happens is it comes to the front, right? Mm -hmm. We have 3a cubed b4, and then we have what's left over in brackets. So we'll do that in green. So we're going to do each of these individually. What would be 15 divided by 3? Um, 5. 5, okay. What would a to the power of 4 divided by a to the power of 3 be? Um, just a. Yeah, a to the power of one, or you could say. And b4 divided by b4? Um, b. Oh, uh, nothing. Well, it becomes b to the power of zero, which is just one. So in other words, what we say is those cancel out. So that kind of canceled out there. Okay? So then we have our next step. What is negative three divided by positive three? Um, zero. Well, it's not zero. One. No one, that's right. One. Yeah. Because if it's zero, it cancels everything out. a4 divided by a3? Um, a. Yeah. And b5 divided by b4. B. Okay. And then finally, our last one, negative 6 divided by 3? Um, negative 2. Yeah. a3 by a3? A. Well, that won't be a. Wait. It cancels out. Cancels out. Creates a 1, so it's gone. And b6 divided by b4? Um, b2. b2. Okay. So we take a look at that. We have our b2 here. Okay, now, that was the top of our equation. Now, I could look inside this. Um, is there any other style of factoring to this? Probably not. No, it doesn't look like it. What I'm going to now do is I'm going to retake our factored form here. We're going to retake it and put it back on the top of that fraction we originally were working with. So this is our new top of the fraction, okay? And that top of the fraction was what we highlighted before. So now what we have on the top is 3a cubed b4 times 5a minus 1ab minus 2b squared, all divided by 3a squared b3. So divided by, what did I say, 3a squared? 3a squared b3. Now, because this is a multiplication sign, technically, technically think of this like this term times all three in there. 3a b4. Here? Yeah. Because that was the common factor we took out here. That's this term, oh, that's yeah. that term, and that's that term. And then the brackets, 
we just put down here. So this is the new top of the equation. Okay. So now, uh, technically, before we do anything, we should state the restrictions at this point, but we can always come back to that too. This is always the best part. Before we simplify anything, after we've done all the factoring, this is when we should state restrictions. So the restriction is that we don't want the bottom of this equation to equal what? Zero. Zero. That's right. Now, technically, we have three. Um, we have two variables on the bottom. Okay. So one way we could write this is you could um, we could split this up. We have three a squared and b cubed, and we know that it cannot equal zero. Okay, so I'm going to move this aside. This will be like our side calculation. So before we simplify, we've got to do the side calculation. Well, in order for this to be zero, what a term would create this all to be a zero? If we were to multiply all this. What term or what value could a be that if it multiplied by 3 and b, it would give us a zero? Zero. Zero, that's right. So very simply, we know that a cannot be zero. And what about for b? What b term would make everything zero? Zero. Yeah, yeah. So b cannot be zero. So those are our two restrictions. I'll highlight those in yellow. Our two restrictions are a can't be zero and b can't be zero. And that's essentially it. Okay. If we were to isolate, um, if we were to isolate for a because there's two variables, the long way of doing that, and I'll quickly do it at the top. Okay. Let's say we were isolating for a. So we had three a squared b cubed. You know, and it was equal to zero. Well, if I need to move the three, I divide each side by three. Zero divided by three is still zero, and I have a squared b cubed. I want to isolate for a, so I move b cubed. We still get zero on this side, so we have b squared. And then get rid of the square, we square root, while well, square root of zero is zero. So a still can't be zero. And we would have done the same thing for b. That's the idea of the process, okay? So we have our restrictions, great. Now we simplify. Well. Again, like I said, because this is like a term that's being multiplied by all three we have in here, um, let's look at the coefficient first. What do these two coefficients make if we divide them? One. One. So, or essentially you could say they cancel, cancel out. out. So we, now we only have a coefficient one, which we don't really need to write. A cubed divided by A squared, what happens to that? It just becomes A. Yeah, that's right. So we can kind of scratch these out. And we have just an A on top, so we'll write A. And B4 divided by B3? Um, it just becomes B. Just becomes B, so we kind of just have a B on top. Okay. And then we have 5A minus AB minus 2B squared. And that's it. There's our simplified version at the very bottom. That's our final answer. We'll highlight that in blue. This is our final answer. No longer a fraction. We've simplified it. And we have our restrictions. A can't be 0 and B cannot be 0. Okay, and that's exactly what they ended up.